Az energiaszegénységnek a legkárosabb hatásai. Hát elsősorban a, a gyerekeink, és én lék meg ezt, mert hogy ugye télen fáznak, ha nincs áram, akkor nem tud tanulni, ha, ha nem tud tanulni, akkor az iskolában emiatt megkülönböztetik, amúgy is a származása miatt, mert zömmel cigányok lakta terület, ha meg rosszul tanul, akkor nyilván azért még egy ilyen plusz dolog, ha büdös a ruhája, a fűszagú, az, az, az egy újabb plusz dolog, és akkor ezzel birkoznak. Hát a felnőtteknek meg hát ez egy mindennapi ö, ö, rutin, nehéz feladat, amit meg kell oldani napi szinten. Our society has never been more dependent on energy and natural resources than it is today. Yet the fundamental case remains that people need light, heat and fuel to cook with in their homes. Masses of people across Europe cannot meet their basic energy needs and therefore cannot fully participate in society. If you are deprived of energy services or the necessary infrastructure, then you are considered energy poor. You spend more than the average household, but your home is still cold and damp, and you are going without other necessities. There are really three causes to fuel poverty. One is that people's incomes are just too low. You know, they are inadequate. Whatever kind of property you live in, you would be struggling. Second is the fact that energy prices are more expensive for some customers, so we you know, and prices have been going up much faster than in relation to incomes. And the third is the standard of housing. Energy poverty affects people across Europe, in urban and rural areas, in all parts of the continent. But in a time of growing inequality, some people are more affected than others. How much are governments and private energy companies responsible to provide fair and affordable access to energy services and adequate housing? In many countries, there is nothing to stop companies disconnecting people from services, even in the coldest months of the year. We'll have different frameworks in different countries for providing energy, for supplying energy, and I think we have to have something at a European level that says this is a problem for all countries. I think the key is to put the vulnerable consumers at the centre of any decision. And by this I mean that, for instance, energy companies need to be aware that a fraction, a percentage of their um, um, consumers, of their clients, they, uh, they, will, they struggle to pay for the energy they need at home. And this connection cannot be the only response to that. To that. Utilities should not disconnect vulnerable people during periods of cold weather where we know that, um, that, that those disconnections will then result in extreme hardship and suffering. Think about what, it, what the health impacts of people being disconnected in the mi middle of winter mean economically for those people who then have to be, uh, then become, of course, have to be treated medically and so on. This, is, this kind of basic policy needs to be pan-European. These houses are depending on on the stoves and all the wooden stoves, so they are very, which is very difficult, especially in winters. And for the people, they usually burn everything they can find, which is again connected not even to health, but even the impact on the environment. It's azért nehéz kimászni ebből, mert hogy ez egy ördögi kör, én is, én is benne voltam többször ebben, hogy, hogy kaptam egy támogatást az önkormányzattól, azt a 70 százalékot, azt a bizonyos 70 százalékot, kifizettem a 30-at, aztán jött mondjuk egy téli időszak, amikor nem lett munkám, újra belekerültem ebbe az adósság csapdába. We want to have some better um, 
service standards right across Europe for all customers. We're all part of the same community. And let's learn the lessons from each other country. You know, there's lots of good practice going on, but there's some very bad practice I've seen as well, where people are cut off and then they have to pay more to get reconnected. And then they pay, they're, they're asked to pay a much higher tariff when they are, they're being penalised for being poor, not for being bad customers. They're being penalised for poverty. Poverty is an issue in the UK, more and more people struggling to pay their bills, and it is an issue that will get worse. So let's get all of these public sector utility providers to make it a positive premium, a negative premium, so that the poorest pay less. That would be something we could all aim for if we want to see the, the um, market solutions or we can take a different route and say that the state should properly help provide for those who are more vulnerable and who aren't able to earn the highest wages. We would like to have all governments see this as a, a basic human entitlement to have fair access to essential services. For historical reasons, the most extreme cases of energy poverty can be seen in Central and Eastern Europe. In the 21st century, can we afford to leave so many people struggling for the most basic necessities? Eastern Europe is probably the region um, uh, that is the most vulnerable to, to energy poverty in the whole EU. And this is explained for historical reasons. The quality of the building stock um, is, uh, is what it is. A large chunk of the building stock was built during socialism when it was um, uh, heavily subsidized by the state. Um, and uh, this means that the energy performance of these buildings are, is, is not great. But it has to do also with this whole transition or multiple transitions that occurred after the changes in, 19, in the 1990s, unemployment, uh, shrinking salaries and liberalisation and privatisation of the energy sector, which means that um, uh, energy prices were set up to a level that um, uh, should allow to recover the generation costs or, or the provision costs of energy. And this happened while uh, there was the, the um, uh, safety net that the state uh, used to provide or should provide was not ready. Um, and as a combination of these structural and, and more short term and shorter term factors, we have a, a quite a complex and worrying uh, energy poverty situation. More than 7% of the whole country's, whole Slovakia's population lives in um, marginalized and spatially segregated Roma settlements. It's around 300,000 people. Basically, these settlements are located in remote locations in rural areas of eastern part of Slovakia and they face multiple, multiple problems. It's not only connected to, social seg to spatial segregation, that means um, bad housing stock, lack of infrastructure, lack of access to networks, lack of access to uh, drinkable water, but also um, connected to social uh, disadvantages and um, lack of social networks which is resulting in multi-generation traps of poverty. East Europe had very high energy price increases over the last 20 years. And in more recent years, uh, countries like, uh, like Greece, for example, or Spain, are also coming up very high on those, on those indices. Who can not be able to get the fish, it is probably going to go to the forest and get the fish, which is very difficult, because, of course, Egyrészt para az, hogy esetleg elkapják és kapért egy horribilis büntetést. Um, you have the situation of the Roma, um, which, uh, which is of course very complex and, and has many other dimensions, but there is a specific type of poverty, energy poverty, linked to the Roma population, which in the case of Hungary um, uh, results in the criminalization of the Roma because they, they um, uh, collect uh, food illegally. And um, and this 
um, this needs to be um, incorporated into into some wider understanding of what energy poverty is, which is made up of many different um, types of vulnerabilities and, and different and how these vulnerabilities result in impacts to, to different socioeconomic groups. And about heating, uh, we have a forest here, but uh, the wood from forests um, are also very expensive for Roma. So some some people try to steal a wood, and then they has big problems with this, uh, with police. Energy poverty is not just a socio-economic, but also a political issue. Government action around questions of energy can greatly affect people's health, well-being and quality of life. And government inaction to rising prices and increased hardship may cause people to react in ways that can surprise even governments. There are recent examples of how um, energy affordability becomes um, um, politicised. Uh, this, well, Macedonia is a good example and Bulgaria is an even better example. In 2013, um, the, uh, the government had to uh, resign because of the protests that were triggered, triggered um, um, as a result of the increase in electricity prices. Um, and uh, in some other cases, it's uh, powerful institutional actors in Hungary, the Hungarian government, that takes over this issue and uses it to, to gain political support, kind of captures the discourse and, and incorporates into its own political discourses. We need to see investment from government in energy efficiency measures so that we can be insulating homes, we can be improving transport provision around our towns and cities, helping people uh, run their lives in, a, in an affordable way, but also in a way that addresses climate change as well. Um, we have to make these solutions accessible, either through government initiatives that are rolled out around the country, or through schemes that people can um, take part in to get their homes insulated uh, without massive cost, uh, because that's the way that we can address fuel poverty and at the same time tackle climate change. If we tackle fuel poverty in a rational way, we will get not just social benefits, as in we'll have people who are less anxious about their bills, less stressed, who are comfortable, they're not miserable in their homes. We'll also get economic benefit because the money that they're wasting on energy bills could be spent in those local communities. And thirdly, we will get environmental benefits as well because if we're insulating those homes, we will be keeping the poor uh, green because they won't be spending more on energy than they need to. They're already using less than most people, but they're spending more as a percentage of their income. We can keep them green and warm. That's our message. There are many organisations, communities and individuals who have developed working solutions which make energy affordable, housing more efficient and consumption less damaging to the environment. We need to make sure that there is a greater awareness of the potential of these practices and to make them a reality for all the communities of Europe. The expression, it's not easy being green, is one of the most awful expressions I think that anyone's coined. Because the abundance of heat and power that we that we enjoy with renewable systems it is quite astounding. With properly insulated, uh, properly insulated homes, with the efficient use of wood, with uh, um, solar power for lighting and, and uh, um, facilities, we not only do we pay no utility bills for the pleasure, but we have too much. In this scenario, uh, we can actually supply our neighbours with power. What would be a very, very useful thing to do, in our opinion, is to make these uh, technologies and systems and processes available to more people, to transfer those skills uh, 
in, a, in an appropriate way. Uh, try to uh, try to include materials and components that are uh, appropriate for the technological level. We have the technology to decarbonise as fast as the climate science is demanding we do. We just require the political will and the culture shift to demand that from the powers that, that be. It's interesting about uh, going out to places where there's uh, more extreme levels of poverty and, and lack of access to technology because it gives you the contrast. It gives you the contrast uh, between what we have available and what other people have available in, in, in different societies. I think the important thing when you're thinking about energy poverty is to recognise that energy can bring enormous wealth and enormous riches but for the moment that wealth and riches are all going to a very elite group of people and if we were to have municipally owned renewable energy generation that's run by communities for communities like the turbines we have around here it could be a very different picture. This is more than energy it's about housing it's about basically how we organize our cities how we build our cities and how we live in them uh, through the fabric of the built environment through the planning of, of neighborhoods and through of course the regulation of, uh, of, of our housing. Energy poverty, like many of the problems we face in Europe today, is a highly complex social, economic and environmental issue. Yet if we are prepared to develop solutions that tackle all these at the same time and pull together actors from government, business and civil society, the gains and positive benefits will ripple across our society.